and welcome to Challenge Accepted, the show about Wildstar and the game itself. You know, other things, banter and whatnot. This is episode 16. We will be talking about lots of stuff. We're going to be talking about Head Start, how the uh, queue times are necessary, because they are, even if you don't like them, and how the uh, cred or creed... Uh, guys, how, how, how do cred, I... Dude. Cred, dude. Cred. 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 Okay. creed requires two E's to go <laughs> E. Shut up. Dread, da da da. Okay, thank you, thank you. It's like Judge Dread. Well, yeah, like, like you would Judge Dread. <sighs> I don't watch <sighs> Judge Dread, but anyway, uh, we're also gonna be talking about how the uh, cred system is uh, on hold, which it's also amazing, but it's on hold unfortunately. So those are gonna be the topics. Let's go around the room and introduce our hosts. Uh, Shriggs, how you doing? Good. All right, cool. Shriggs is not here. He is on vacation in Florida. He uh, texted me a picture of his hotel. He's like 4,000 feet up in the air with like this huge beach front. I'm like, you jerk. He's like, it's awesome here. And I'm like, all right, cool. It's too hot in the summer to stand on the beaches. Yeah, it's not that bad, but eh, it's okay. Um, he was on Wildstar a few minutes ago. I was <laughs> blown away that he's on vacation and playing the game. Wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, vacationing, I mean... in, vacationing in Nexus. Yeah, right. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Rusty, how you doing, sir? Not bad. How you guys doing tonight? Excellent, excellent. Uh, Mr. Tyree, miss, how are you? I'm pretty good. And playing the game while you're not supposed to. <laughs> what are you talking about? I know, I know. Game. Dude, you I... Can, you I, cannot get on Server Pago right now, and I am not logged in <laughs> under this handle. Well, yeah, under that handle. <laughs> I am... Where to God? Uh -huh. It's a thing. Uh -huh, sure, whatever. Not here. Yeah, whatever. All right, and a uh, special guest because uh, we wanted a filler because, you know, three people is cool, but four makes an awesome foursome. I don't know. Uh, four is almost a party. Four is almost a party. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Ketrosel, how's it going, sir? Going good. That's going good. good. Glad to be here. Awesome, awesome. Ketrosel yeah. is a uh, uh, longtime buddy of mine. We play a TCG together and Wildstar because I was like, hey, you going to play Wildstar? He's like, yeah. I'm like, cool. We should, we should totally play together. And, you know, things happen. And but, then he didn't. He's and, not even in the guild. No. Like, no. I, I don't even know what happened. I no. tried to get a guild. I, I tried fight. to get it. was like, no, nah, I don't want to. <laughs> Well, that, that's because the tune I was playing on wasn't actually in the guild uh, yet, so... That sounds... That actually sounds like... Sounds like that. Yeah. <laughs> you well, ruined just... it for all of us. Yeah, well... Yeah. Uh, Ketracel is being represented by the uh, Raptor holding a rocket launcher being chased by a missile and a boombox while riding a shark. So... That's yeah. actually what I look like in real life. It is. It's, it's very true. It is. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, well, that's all right. So, uh, uh, Tacoman, the uh, viewer list is unavailable because Twitch is just a boob. That's why. It, it it barely ever updates for me, so I never really tried to actually do anything with it, but that's okay. All right. So if you so, want us to know you're here, that means you have to talk. Yeah, type in chat, guys. Viewers, hello. How you doing? Thank you so much for uh, joining us this episode. We're gonna, we have a lot of really cool stuff to talk about. But first, uh, make sure to check out our social media, uh, facebook.com forward slash challenge accepted, no ease and accepted, www.challengeaccepted, no ease and accepted dot com. And we also have a Twitter, uh, at challenge failed, follow us and all that fun stuff. If you want to be a part of our guild, we are on the server Pego, not Progro or Pego or whatever. It's the server, shorter one. The shorter one with an A. PvP guild on the exile side because exiles are awesome. There's lots of us and it's fun. You yeah, should, it's like you should do stuff. We have active team speak. We have we have we have active team speak. Active forums. Apply now. Sunday. 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 No. 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 Not Sunday. Apply now. Hey. No. <laughs> no. No. Goth. Like three days. No. Goth. No. Goth. Frack you, buddy. Frack you, buddy. <laughs> oh. Nogoth, of course, being one of our guildies, who's uh, also owns a team speak, which are probably gonna get banned from from, not, from saying that now. So, I I, I keep forgetting that I, I have to treat Nogoth with respect because he has the power to just ban everybody. <laughs> oh, does that mean you have to treat me with respect because I'm the one that runs the website? Because <laughs> you certainly don't treat me with respect. Ah, oh, <laughs> dang! Now that you put that, oh man! All right, so I can just pick on Rusty then. All right, that's fine. Oh, what shrinks? What shrinks for? We only uh, board him across. Rusty's like our only good writer. Shh, oh, well, okay, so. <laughs> Dang I'll it! I'll put all my articles. Dang it! <laughs> well, uh, you guys are jerks. Can't make fun of me either, because no, I, I can't. Live. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> all right, so I guess I gotta respect everyone this week. Ah, darn it. 
Yeah. All right. So uh, let's let's move on here. Um, I think we should talk about Head Start first because that has been the slew of topics um, from forums to Reddit to everything else to famous YouTubers to the freaking New York Times. No, no, I'm just kidding. But um, Head Start, it has been an interesting experience for me since pl since playing MMOs for pretty much all my life. I think this has probably been one of the best launches in MMO history. Now, I can't confirm or deny that, but this is just my personal opinion. It was extremely smooth. You went in, maybe t took, what, 20 minutes for us to all log in. The servers crashed maybe four hours total the first the, the three days of Head Start, which is almost unheard of in an MMO. Most servers are not that stable. So, I mean, shout out to Cougar and his team for just being phenomenal. They probably slept like two hours for those three days so i mean they just did a great job uh rusty what was your uh, all take and experience on this head start here for the uh the mmo launch it was you know it was pretty smooth i mean we had that uh ddos invasion as soon as the servers went live for 45 China? minutes yeah uh i saw some maps of where the where everything was coming out and it was just it looked like a giant just it looked brutal Yep. Uh, but, you know, 45 minutes, an hour later, they had it under control and we were mm -hmm. back in. And uh, I don't know. It was, it was pretty solid. I mean, like you said, it was. I think they only shut down the servers two or three times for updates. And it was like two in the morning they would set the servers up yep. and we have were, them back we, up 25 minutes later. The best part was we were like, oh, they're shutting the servers down? Oh, it's 2 a.m.? We probably should go to bed. <laughs> Yeah, we were PvPing until they kicked us off the servers. Yeah, and we pretty just much. Wait to get back yeah, on. yeah, it, it was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, Tyramis, what was your take on Head Start? Oh, uh, it was pretty sweet. I, I, I like, I don't know. I, I got kind of drunk. <laughs> I couldn't get. I couldn't get in for the first couple hours. I didn't care. I took a break. Watched some Archer. I came back. I got in. I got launched. It, I played all night until like six in the morning. I started in, at, at midnight, by the way, guys. I I, um, I live on the, the west coast, the, the only good coast. Um, so, yeah, that was that was good. That was good. I did that, and um, I don't know. It's smooth. The whole launch has been smooth. They've yeah. had minimal problems, mm -hmm. games minimal crashing. There's been some progressive, pro progression blocking bugs, but they've been, like, cleared out pretty yep. quickly. Um, so it's hard to really fault them for, you know being awesome yeah I mean, it was funny yeah. mm -hmm. it was funny watching like everyone who was getting ready to stream you know for the for the open of early access <laughs> yeah. and everyone everyone just was dead screened because we were all waiting to get in and i think uh, at one point bog otter had fallen asleep and left his camera rolling and he was just <laughs> out cold at his desk waiting for the servers to come back online. <laughs> that's amazing awesome. yeah it was pretty bad it was it was funny that's awesome uh Catch yourself. How was your experience for Head Start? If you actually were crazy enough to stay up like we did, I I actually uh, went to sleep uh, at like five in the afternoon and <laughs> set my alarm for for two. Mm -hmm. So I got up and was well rested. And How did that work out for you? Did you fall asleep immediately? <laughs> no, no, I was like punch drunk. I was just like I couldn't stop laughing. And, like, I was sitting there watching the Chambacabra, and I was just, like, mesmerized by it. <laughs> and the next thing I know, it's, like, 6 in the afternoon. Yep. And I'm, like, yep. I am so tired, and my back is killing me. I need to stop playing Wildstar and eat. Yeah. And the, that was pretty much everyone's, <laughs> uh, everyone's I think, everyone's experience uh, so far when Head Start actually came out. Uh, I, I did the exact same thing. I set my alarm. I went to bed early. Woke up at, like, 2 a.m., I had pancakes pre-made so I wouldn't wake up anybody. I had some oh, pancakes. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. You know what's really good? You make yourself waffles and then put them in the freezer, and then you can just put them in the toaster. Yep, yep. Uh, it's like the best. I, I grilled a steak at, at 2 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wanted protein. Nice. Why not? Why nice. not? Yeah. I, I, steak. Feeling a little low on iron. <laughs> Fix that. I bought like four bottles of uh, Powerade and a bunch of like healthy fruit snack and not fruit snack like he healthy like dried fruit and stuff and it was it was it was you were the most gamer ever. You're yeah. like I got some power bars and some vitamin <laughs> water. Like I got Cheetos and Dr Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> hey hey, trying to be healthy, man. Trying to be healthy. It worked too because it, it kept me up quite a lot longer than I thought it would. So that's all right. But I mean, as far as like yeah, as far as like Head Start goes, I mean, it was really interesting to see how 
Uh, they handled everything. Like, they were just constantly on Reddit, on Twitter, saying, hey, this is what's going on. I mean, even Gaffney was like, at 3 a.m., was like, hey, this is this is a DDoS attack. This is what's going on. You know, we're working on it. No big deal. And the my my biggest, I think, applaud to the community was that they were just like, oh, okay, that's fine. Take your time. It, it'll get up. I mean, yeah, you had the trolls. They were like, oh, this is the worst game ever. Blah, blah, blah. The game's already dead. It's it's, it's not. The servers aren't up. And everyone's just like, shh, go away. Go away, troll. No one likes you. Yeah, it's going to suck for those people that experienced those four to, like, nine-hour queues. <laughs> but I, I got to admit, like, I saw four hours and 45 minutes mm -hmm, yeah. on my queue yeah. once. Yeah, we all and it did. Took me an, it took me 50 minutes to get in. So, yeah. like... Mm -hmm. Uh, I did not experience that, but I do not. I, I know. I know that a lot of people did, and a lot more of it was on the EU servers than it was on our servers. Apparently, like they were getting like nine, ten hour waits on their server, and then they would get in, and then there's a there was a bug that uh, would create a character screen with no menu options, and it would be you couldn't do anything. So they get in, and they couldn't do anything, and then they were stuck. So they had to re-log and re queue which nine hours and then nine hours again. Yeah, it's kind of BS for them. Yeah. But, I mean, for how many people that affected compared to how many people who actually got to play the game, uh, it's still a pretty smooth launch. Yeah, like, I, I mean, like, 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 if we compare it to, like, Star Wars Old Republic or Guild Wars 2, like, th those are, like, the, the two most recent MOs. I don't really count uh, ESO because I never played it, and from what I heard, the launch was just awful <laughs> so, well they had they had progression blocking bugs well, like they still do ones the, the, and, there's still and, bugs in the game that just are not good well, so the other thing that eso did is they announced a uh, uh, open servers time and then went ahead and opened the servers like two or three hours before that Ooh. and so like it ticked off a lot of people because they were like like people weren't able to get name reservations that they wanted there was all kinds of issues with them doing that which i thought was funny because it's like hey you're starting early but whatever. yeah i just it, i mean just props to carbine once again i mean th thank you so much for for being awesome i mean there's really no other way to say it i'm like you guys have have really kind of i think shown the gaming industry what it means to really be that kind of figurehead in your game and i i, I just want to applaud you guys for that because it's something that I think will really carry you a lot, really, really far, and also it makes your um, game just look a lot more appealing because your community is very positive. I mean, ha have you guys noticed a lot of negativity even in like, um, even in like uh, zone chat and everything? Like everyone's like really positive. There's no, there's not a lot of trolling going on. It's I, they've really kind of set the example for how to act in their game, and, and I think that really speaks volumes. Don't, don't let everyone speak at once. Rusty. I was thinking about it. Yeah. I've, I've noticed kind of the same thing, although after the game, like after it got to the public launch, yeah. things started to, to go downhill a little bit. But you could definitely tell the people that had been there since early access were like, hey, knock it off. Shut up. Stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, it was yeah, the first I mean, MMO. Like the, yeah. the public launch was, was pretty good anyway, though. Like, I mean, quite a lot of the issues were starting to be cleared up. And, and I don't know. I think it's, I, I think it'd be pretty hard pressed for somebody else to do better. Like, uh, Guild Wars 2, you could play. That was, you know what? The, a lot of people are correct there. There were no cues of that. But um, you couldn't play with your friends. Yeah. <laughs> at all. Because the system that would let you switch servers uh, or work. switch instances yep. was bugged as hell. It didn't work. <laughs> so, like, yeah, sure, you can play, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it's, you know, and and then, the, like, with the whole Star Wars launch, like, uh, Kajal, do you remember that? That was awful. Like, yeah. how, how many Actually, times did the servers go down within, like, the first two hours? It was, like, five or six. It was just ridiculous. Well, it was... It went. The servers went down after public launch. Their early access launch went amazingly well. Yeah, that's right. Except yeah. Except for so basically, how they did it is, uh, based on when you pre-ordered the game, determined what wave of invites you were in for the early access. That's right. Ah, perfect. that's awesome. No wonder I didn't have any yeah. issues. Yeah. So I pre-ordered like fourteen seconds after. <laughs> the game was, was available for pre-order. Mm -hmm. The problem was 
people were upset because they were like, I pre-ordered, you know, three days before early access. Why am I not in yet? And they're like, well, because you're not until, like, the last wave of yep. pre-order. Yeah, I remember and, that. But then that's, when the game went cool. live... That was, that, that's that's an excellent decision. Yeah, it worked. It worked. There were no queue times. Mm. All the servers kind of got populated because as one would get to medium, they'd take it off of the recommended list. Yep. And so they were cycling their servers, so all of their servers had decent population at start. But the problem so with was, that it, was is once, like you said, the actual launch happened, like server population just got so screwed up. Yeah, everything got oh messed up after the game went live. And that's where they had a lot of their issues. Their pre-launch uh, stuff worked very well. Yeah, I mean, like, their, their head start was good because of the whole wave system, but... It's just a rough, rough launch in general. Now I'm I'm really curious. I I really want them to release some numbers and and see how many active players they have, and like what their total concurrent actual player base is right now. Because I I want it to like break all kinds of records. I I, I want this game to show every MMO. At, like just up, just just because it deserves it. I mean, uh, get, um, Tyrus, do you think that we're gonna see um, some some big numbers from them, or do you think they're gonna kind of try and keep it under wraps for the first like, couple I, months? I've been looking at a lot of the media, and a lot of a lot of the traction they're getting is really like good press. Yeah. So there's um, there's uh, a lot of people that um, uh, that are saying good things. The few people that are saying bad things are like, oh, well, it's just a wild clone. But like, that's actually not much of a deterrent for like their main target audience. <laughs> so. Some of the some of the reviews are like saying it's a phenomenal thing and saying at the same time it's a wild clone. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm not too worried. Let's put it that way. I think I think they did a pretty phenomenal job of um of marketing it in such a way to the right crowd of people to just mm -hmm. let them do the marketing for them. Yeah. Um we're uh we're most likely um we're most likely looking at like your your you know launch to be within the millions i think uh, i i would be really surprised they didn't hit the same kind of numbers that guild wars 2 did yeah because guild wars 2 is not pumping out the same kind of content anymore i mean they are pumping out content but it's not it's not it's what not it used to be. progression based like like heavy progression based content it's i mean it has like crafting progression or it has like uh what's the other kind of progression they have they have um Oh, that uh, like like cosmetic progression and things like that, but it's not, yeah. it's not that it's not that standard World of Warcraft style progression. And without that, they're people, gonna lose a lot of people's people, well, interest. Yeah, I mean, like, like the way that Guild Wars Two works is they lose a lot of interest like after the first couple of days once the new Living Story comes out, and so like yeah. like their numbers like peak in like the first week, and then after that, like it just goes back down to like. Just kind of and like I think, people grinding and stuff. So and yeah. Guild Wars, um, Guild Wars monetization style is actually going to work in favor uh, to Wildstar because a lot of the people that are playing that game right now, it doesn't hurt them to come play yep. Wildstar because it's not going to cost them any less to to not play their Guild Wars account yep. or cost them anything to not play the Guild Wars account for a month. Right. So they can buy Wildstar and try it out and like have fun and then go play or your you know try your friend's 7-day key and if they're having fun and your friends are already paying for it. I mean, that's their biz that's their idea in the business model. They yep. want they want people to be like, "Well, my friends are playing, so if I'm honest, we'll buy it." Because yeah. like that's what I want to do, play with my friends. Yeah. Did you hear about those friend keys by the way? That they gave out uh, no, I didn't hear. Well, I have them. I haven't. Yeah, they're tied to. So they run the same system now as the friends keys in beta. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So if there's a chance that if you are, if the person you gave a key to, does something wrong, you can also get in trouble because you're the one who gave them the key. They're all linked to your account. Oh, great. Oh. Yeah. I, I'm not too worried. I have yeah. mine like predetermined on. <laughs> They get they just all the people who want them are not ready to play games right now. So mm -hmm. I gave I gave all mine out on Twitter. <laughs> so I was like, hey, we'll who see are... what happens. Yeah, yeah, we'll see if I, we'll see what happens. So uh, yeah. Um, all right, so I, I think we've ex exploited more than enough. Uh, let's move on to. Um, the rated tournament discussion. I think that th this will be a, a, a good one here. Um, now I'm gonna put this link in chat here real quick, and if it actually, there we go. 
I have to load it up. There we go. Um, and someone posted this on the Wildstar forums. This was literally a 12-step thing that you have to do to get a tune for the 20-man raid. Step one, reach level 50. All right, that's, that's pretty standard. Step two, acquire 150 Elder Gems to buy the attunement key. Have fun with that. Step three, kill elemental mini bosses in Wild Run, uh, which can be soloed, which is uh, can't be soloed. Uh, which oh, it can be. Can be soloed. Uh, Tyre, uh, Tyre, do you remember when I asked uh, what that elemental boss was for uh, a couple about a month and a half ago? Yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. I, read that, it. I that, we were both talking about it. That's I what that's for. That's what that's for. So, yeah. um, step four. Uh, become beloved with the Dominion or Exile faction, which is 32,000 reputation required, which really isn't that hard. Rep is pretty easy in this game. Thank goodness. Thank you, by the way, Carbine. I hate rep grinding. Step five. Complete the event um, Arc Ship Heist, Puzzle, Stealth, and Some Combat, whatever that means. Uh, I, I assume that that's complete the adventure, the, the heist. Yeah, game. and there'll be some puzzles, some right. stealth, and a bit of combat. Step six. Yeah, we're, ha we're halfway done. Obtain silver, me silver medal or higher in every, every veteran adventure. Uh, yeah, requirements uh, different for each adventure. Time, low death, optional, etc. That sucks. Uh, step seven. Complete the event uh, Mech Assault uh, sm Simple Smash and Grab. I think that's in Farside, according to the picture, which I, mm -hmm. I haven't actually done that one yet. Um, and then the... the uh, Step eight's just going to be so much fun. Obtain a silver medal, silver medal or higher in every veteran dungeon. Storm Talon, Kelvoth, Skullcano, and Sanctuary. That's ridiculous. The requirements are complete each dun dungeon and optional quest within the limit, within the time limit. Th within the time limit, you have to complete Storm Talon in thirty minutes while doing everything. Have fun. <laughs> Step nine. Complete the uh, slugging it out event, which I have not done yet, but apparently you have to kill slugs, which I'm okay with. Uh, That's step a big old slug. Yeah, it's a big old slug. Uh, step 10, complete the uh, Flight of Fancy in Aurora, Auroria, excuse me, which never have, done, have not done that one yet. Step 11, this is going to suck. Kill These 10. Are fun, though. Kill ten world bosses in Nexus. You are able to kill the same one over. I don't again. think this is good. I think that one's actually rather easy comparatively. Yeah. Uh, Super easy. Yeah, because like you can you can kill the same one over and over again. No, and you're, like by yeah, the time you reach right. by the time you reach fifty, you could practically solo um, Metal Maw, right? Like yeah, that's true. So so you could just sit there and do that. Although I personally he's on a six I, hour spawn timer though. Yeah. All of them are. Yeah. So I personally am going to go around to each one though because I want I want to have all of the kills. <laughs> I wonder all though. The kills. Does it count them from like so like yesterday? Turn no. did. No, no you, have to, you, you have to get the key first. Now, yeah. okay. now you have that, to get the key first. Because the key, the key is what unlock. It's like picking up a quest. Yep. And, yeah, that, and the key unlocks the quest. Now, I thought this was really interesting because um, uh, it on. means that all the stuff you do at level fifty doesn't mean anything until it's, you get that key, yeah, and you got one hundred and fifty elder gems to get yeah, before you get that, which is not. It's not. You know, not small bad. change. I have five elder gems already. I'm and the uh, the final <laughs> wow, you've gotten some good boom boxes. The uh, yeah, yeah, the final step is uh, yeah. yeah, the final step is defeat the extra boss in Kelvareth, veteran Kelvareth, excuse me. Which she, she her on normal is a pain in the ass. I can't imagine her on veteran mode. But all right, so that's the twelve steps to getting your key for Wild Star Rating. Hey, all right, have fun and don't jump out the window. It's not even that's twenty man, and then we don't even know what. A tuning for 40 man looks like 40 that. man do this twice blindfolded with chewing gum and one hand up behind be, tied behind your back like oh is there chewing gum mm -hmm. i wish there was chewing gum all right so uh catch yourself what do you think about this i actually really like it i i think that having right attunements is is awesome because it makes you do something more than hey i hit 50 drag me through here to get gear right you know, so it's like you have to prove your competence in order to raid, <laughs> mm -hmm. which means that you can't have incompetent people raiding. So that means that you don't get to raid best. Sorry. Aww. <laughs> Aww. We've, been, we've been trying to re we've been trying to find people to replace them for a while. Oh now. come on! I'm a, you know what? Screw you guys. I'm going home. He's definitely not a tank. 
No, I'm not a tank. I, I do not know. Rusty I'm, can tank. We'll, we'll, we'll I'm, I'm not a front. stalker tank. I, I have tried the warrior tank, and I'm a lot better at that. Oh, oh, well, then. Which is, oh, well, then. Which is weird. Oh, well, making that up. Nope, nope. If you're tanking by yourself, it's not really tanking, Dad. <laughs> oh, that's that's that, that's hurtful. Oh, Rusty, what do you think of this Tomb and Key process? I think it's, I think it's too short. I think it's awesome, but I, I think it's too short. Well, I, I think it should be a little bit harder. Okay, uh, what would you do to make it harder? I think that you should have to go back at level fifty. Like, everything seems to be in level 50 zones, but we also have those level 50 zones that are old zones redone for the level mm. 50s, you know what I mean? Wilder Run is level 40-ish, though. Yeah, level 40-ish. I think it would be cool if you had to go back and, like, you had to go hunt something stupid out in one of these low-level zones. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but go, go, being able to go back and just kind of show off that you're in the middle of this key quest and show new people that, yeah, this is part of it. Would be a cool yeah. step, I think. Let's not give Carbine any ideas that would just make it like just a pain in the butt. I I think you should have to re-level a character to fifty on another server. <laughs> <laughs> that, should be, that should be part of the attunement. No one would ever play this game ever again if that was the case. But I want some housing for attunement too. There we go. There we go. Uh, Tyrus, what is your thoughts on on this uh, twelve step program? Uh, I, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I guess apparently I'm wrong. Um, uh, okay. I think um, I think uh, I think it would be good to. I, I don't know. I think there's a not enough like level fifty ish stuff in there. Like I think some of the stuff in, on that attunement is actually lower level. Um, like the killing like those bosses. Quite a lot of those bosses are not um, level fifty. Yeah. Well, like the, only, the only boss you can are... kill Metal Ma, You can kill Metal Ma significantly before. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, that's true. I mean, I've done. Uh, let's see, I've done the Metal Ma, the Kingrave, the uh, Earth Render. I haven't done the Dragon or the Metal Ma Prime. Is a uh, fifty twenty man boss though. Is he? Mm hmm. I'm pretty sure he is. Cause he's over uh, in in yeah White Vale. Uh, well, yeah, I uh, remember a couple episodes we talked about world bosses, and I activated him, and he, like, one-shot me. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, the uh, the Guardian in Celestian is, a le like, a level 11 world boss that it's on a very long spawn timer. Me and Shriggs did that. I didn't get any loot from it. Darn bugs. Um, <laughs> I know that the Ancient... I have not done that one, but I know he's a little bit higher level because he's in uh, Galaras, but that's like level 20. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's like a level 20. Protocol Units in Farside, which is level 30. Wilder Run Boss is going to be like level 40s, and uh, Maglave is like level 50s, I believe. So, I mean, uh, like it varies from like level 8, and then it just kind of slowly teeters it way up. Now, I don't know if Metal Ball Prime is a 20-man uh, like 50, uh, 20 man level 50 raid boss though. Like I, I'm for some reason I thought that the developers said that. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, and like it also mentions too that like level 50 like like uh, guy that's um that's uh, the elemental or whatever it says in the thing that he's yeah. soloable. So like I mean that also leads me to believe that they could. Uh, well, soloable. Could, you know. Well, maybe not with every class though. I don't know. I'm gonna solo it. Well, what about <laughs> you, Baz? What about you? Uh, I might be able to. We'll we'll see how they uh, how how it stacks up. But uh, anyway, um, so yeah, that's that's gonna be raiding. I'm looking forward to that. Considering I'm pretty I'm, stoked. Considering uh, I'm like level 17 and I have like a long way to go before 15. I cannot believe you're still only level 17. Dude, yeah, I've, dude. I've been busy this week. Hey. A little bit fairness on Baz here. I'm actually only level twenty, and I probably should be higher than that. Well, I I did re-roll my tune because I, I my arm was too skinny, and I didn't like the path because everyone was like, I, everyone's like, everyone picked a settler. I was like, who knew? So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be a scientist and make my arm a little bit more fat because the arm I picked was like this little twig thing because I forgot there was body customization. I was like, dang it. Completely forgot about that, so I, I had the the skinniest arm that you could make, and it was just like this little twig thing. It just bugged me. But uh, yeah, I hear that. So so I I, re I remade remade my tune and got to like level twelve within like two hours. So I'm back to seventeen and blah blah blah. Also, uh, uh, one thing that I have found 
really, really annoying that takes up a lot of my time is that damn housing. Like, it's like, oh, okay, so I'll, I'll go into my housing and then just completely waste a bunch of time. <laughs> it's terrible. I, I'm so glad I'm not, like, going into crafting right now like you, you are, Rusty, because I would waste so much time in that. Oh, my gosh. It's terrible. I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to hit 50 and then do crafting because there's no way I can do both. I would, I would just no, no. But Tyremus, what has Challenge Accepted been doing? What has Challenge Accepted been doing? We've been hiring. That's that's good. We want people. Um, I've been doing um, I've been doing a lot of market market stuff. I don't know about you guys. And uh, uh we've been organizing uh organizing a lot of our crafting so that we can get everybody here yep. for veterans, which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, I think well, I think we have somebody that is much higher level than everybody else. Yeah. Um. They, yeah. You know, uh, uh, CERN. Paul, CERN. Paul and CERN are like. CERN is level forty-five. Oh my gosh. Uh, Decora, uh, Decora is thirty-seven. Stabby Mix Stinky Pants is yes. 33, and then No Gus is 30, 32, uh, and then there's another 32, and then we just keep going down from there. I know that from memory. Is I, I know. I do know this from memory. <laughs> yeah, isn't that well, I odd? Know, I didn't know the last guy, right? Like, yeah, I just, I, it's, it's weird. That, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, Gary, uh, from memory, what's the next lowest level on the list? I don't know. <laughs> Sure you don't. Uh -huh. that, that menu's closed. I mean... <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, Challenge Accepted is also looking for writers and some graphic artists uh, to help us do some, some cool stuff. Um, yeah, we want to make this cool and have fun. We are uh, going to be bringing, um, like we said before, our goal is to try and bring esports into the realm of Wildstar. Because the devs have said if the community wants it, they're going to fully engage in it, which, you know, spec mode in Arena would be awesome. So um, we're going to be starting to do some duels and shoutcasts for that. I'm um, going to be doing some PvP breakdown stuff for builds and that kind of stuff. So we need some talented graphic artists to help us with some uh, some cool graphics, overlays and whatnot. Um, right now it's just me and Shriggs, and Shriggs is uh, more of an artist than he is a graphic designer. Um, he is responsible for the overlay. He did a fantastic job. Um, but he, he definitely enjoys making um, artwork and stuff. Like he's 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 done our logo. He's uh, just started a comic which is awesome called the uh, Scepter of the Elder Star, which is a fan made lore project that he's doing. And um, I'm just a very very beginner Photoshop guy. Just you know, I can make squares and make them look cool with drop shadows. <laughs> that that's about my uh, my extent to Photoshop. It's like look at my awesome overlay. It has a drop shadow and stroke. This is cool. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, but uh, if you're looking to write or do anything of that nature, uh, just hit us up on the contact tab on our website. That would be very much appreciated. Um, within the next couple months, we will be giving away prizes to our content creators and staff. Um, we're going to be looking at trying to give away um, some cred, which is going to be in-game time to, to our, our staff. Or as Faz would like to say, creed. Uh, and also, no, some... you you don't get the you don't get the laser disc or or CD to go with that like at all. Uh, Although I guess we could just ship out discs of Creed. It, there we go, we could, yeah. But uh, we're also be doing some some cool crafting giveaways and stuff too. So uh, if you want to be a part of that, hit us up on the website and click on contact and blah blah blah. But uh, other than that, I think that's really all we're doing for challenge accepted. Um, as of right now, we're just leveling and having a great time. So let's get back to the discussion we're of doing, Wildstar. We're doing a lot of uh, group content. Yeah, so yeah, like, we are. If you, if you want to do, like, PvP with us, you can do PvP with us. So, like, if you want to do dungeoning adventures, we're, like, we're always online. We're always having fun together. So, like, it's it's been a lot of it's been a lot of interesting stuff. I ran an adventure the other day. It was a lot of fun. And, you did, uh, like, six hours sir, of PvP sir, last night? CERN, no. Well, I did a bit. But CERN has, uh, uh, has two... Housing dungeons, and I got myself a really cool um, uh, Osin statue. Really? Yeah. yeah, his things are really cool. Very nice. I'll, I'll have to check them out. Um, all right, so let's move on. Um, server population compared to the game versus like closed beta and and now is I think just they've really done a good job at balancing everything out. I mean, the servers feel very alive. They feel very populated, and it's not like they're uh, what sort I'm looking for? It's not like they're like empty or kind of like ghost town feel, like a like Guild Wars 2. What kind of feels because it's that that instance st style of 
of uh, the way the world is. I mean, Wildstar is instanced a little bit, but you at least have content and content and content. Uh, there was a post on Reddit that I saw um, that people were a little upset that Wildstar didn't have that, you know, like, closed connection that WoW uh, kind of felt, which I would definitely agree with that. Um, I, I do miss that, you know, zooming out to the world map and just being able to see everything all at once um, and just kind of being able to inter-travel into wherever you need to without going on, like, a ship or something. So uh, it, th in that aspect, I do miss that. But the world is so big in, uh, in, in and of itself, I think that it kind of makes up for it. Uh, Katrasel, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I've, I've noticed a little bit the, the lower level stuff, like basically any of the, the zoned pre-25 are really well populated. There's a lot of people. It's easy to find groups or stuff. After about the second half of White Veil and past that, it starts to open up a little bit more and it's mm -hmm. harder to find people. But then again, you know what, we're two days after public launch and yeah. I'm complaining that I can't find a lot of people that have gotten to level 30 like I have. So that's a good that's thing, though. Stu that's I mean... kind of stupid. But <laughs> I think I think that the way that they have uh, everything progressing shows a very healthy leveling mm -hmm. community being able to be sustained. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Uh, Tyramis, thoughts on the uh, population of servers and everything? I mean, they're full. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what their actual population number is. So like, well, but, of course, I, but like, like, do you do you feel that they feel alive and you know? Yeah, I know. I, you know who I run into a lot? Challenge accepted members. Yeah, there's. there's I'm like questing, and I'll turn a corner, and I'll be like, oh, purple text. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, um, I, I, I don't know, like, they're full. I, I don't, like, I see people around. One thing that is blatantly clear now that it's no longer closed beta is that I don't have to necessarily sit or, like, like sit in zone chat asking for help to do for yes. things. Because quite often I can just be like, oh, hey, you know what, there are people here. So, um, yeah, let's just kill this elite mob mm -hmm. or, yeah, just, stand or things, just or just like if you see a bunch of people around start killing a red mob and then everybody else will come to you and start killing it with you because they want the extra xp yep so i find i find that's cut something that's kind of nice and i'm looking forward to that at level 50 because our yeah. like you know the like the whole 45 to 50 zone because like oh, when, I did, that close, when I did that close when i did that close beta by oh, myself my and the whole zone was empty i was like what do I do? How do I do this? These are like five person plus quests. Yeah, like, you can't... I mean, like the um, the the like forty, f yeah, forty five to fifty was hard because a lot of the mobs were all primals. Like, like I was like, so I can kill that one and I can kill that one, and you kind of like really careful. You'd be really careful about not dragging two primals together. Well, see, I can't. I couldn't kill a primal by myself. Oh. Yeah. Well, I was a medic, so there was Yeah, shut up, overpowered jerk. I'm a medic. I have easy times in freaking... It's okay. You just make... You it sound like process. that, everybody. That's, you, that's, you will, that's you, the you, real me. You will have a, a nerf bat to your head soon, sir. Don't worry. It's okay. Real me. I'm not a medic. Well, well, uh, you know what? What class did you pick for your starting... Uh, your main slinger, which, well, are not yeah. that, uh, which are not that powerful comparatively. Yeah. They're they're really balanced. Like I saw somebody complaining about them on the Wildstar forums today, saying, "Oh well," or no, no, Reddit, not the Wildstar forums. They were like saying, "Oh well, when are we gonna get the nerf bat?" And um, and I was like, and so many people replied. They were like, "Yeah, so it's the most played class, but it's not really." They don't really think anybody's gonna give the nerf bat to it because it's like I still die. Spellslinger isn't that. I have to balance. play my class really well. Uh, yeah. I don't like. I mean, I have to know when to use my spell search and stuff like that. It's not, it's not one of those classes where you can like auto easily win. just like win, win, win. Yeah. I mean, like the medic, there are certain builds when you get to level fifty where you just like output a ridiculous amount of damage. And the only thing you have to worry about is people standing on your stuff. Yep. <laughs> um, or not doing something stupid where they're no longer next to you if you need yeah. to heal them. But like otherwise, they they have a very consistent style of play. Yep. I'm not gonna say they're easy because they are still hard. But um, in some respects, but they're not 
they're not um they're not the medic complicated right. in mechanics like you have to point and shoot point and shoot really close point and shoot yeah and uh and uh but you still have to pay attention to certain things um i spell slinger I've, is a significantly harder class. hey <laughs> hey, hey hey rusty you, you want to know what's really you? funny is is I, is I can see you playing wild star on the reflection of your window <laughs> yeah true <laughs> Like, Look, wait, if I don't get this challenge done, it was like he's he's playing Wildstar. It was like that's funny. It's on his window. No, I got it. We got gold, so I'm okay now. We can go back to talking. Hey, I mean, I've I've been talking the most since I ever have, and I'm sitting here and I know you're still game. playing. It's just funny that you're like, no, I'm not playing Wildstar. I chose I chose a task where it was brainless. I decided to make myself. Um, in, in the time that we've been talking here, I've made 20 gold. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, so, um, Rusty, as far as um, server population goes, how has your experience been? It's been really good. So, you know, with uh, early start, I did the engineer, and uh, I just sat there and leveled him as fast as I could. And uh, so, you know, with everyone else in early start, it was easy. Everyone was in the same zone as you. Um, and then the final day of early start, I snapped and rolled a different class completely. And uh, I haven't had issues. I thought for sure I was going to have problems like finding people to do low-level stuff with. And mm -hmm. the servers are full enough that I bump into someone somewhere all the time to do something with. And that's been really beneficial. Yeah, no, so. yeah, yeah. I mean, the the, uh, the starter levels have been very, very encouraging. Now, it, I, I think what will speak volumes is to how the, the smaller le the starter levels will look in, like, three or four months time because that that really kind of is where the game kind of starts to teeter off and it, it gets a lot harder to level things but i think that the way that the mentoring system works is you can have your level 50 guy come and help you um and yes it, you know if you want like six people to help you to mentor down and help you quest for a little bit i mean th they get they get xp so which is going to in turn fill their um, their bar for el more elder gems, so that they're getting some cool stuff. They're getting gold along with you, and they're getting possible equipment for their their alts as well. So I mm -hmm. think that the way that the system works is really really good because you're not you're not forced to be become down to like level twelve. Um, you're you you have that option. So I think that in terms of like how the server gets populated and how the lower levels are going to um, affect the gameplay in the future date, I, I don't think we're going to see a problem with that because they've just done such a good job at making sure everything is very, very well done. Um, so, it, it, it'll be interesting to see how the game progresses. Um, now, uh, Rusty, you wanted to talk about uh, leveling 1 through 24 um, on your Engineer and Warrior, so why, why, don't you, why don't you give us a little bit about that? Start with, start with your Engineer. Because I've mm -hmm. heard some some mixed reviews that the engineer is like really really difficult uh, from for like the first ten levels, like in terms of like damage output. Uh, I guess he is. I didn't follow like there's a lot of cookie cutter kind of builds of people. I know there's a lot of engineers running around, and they all have a bruiser bot and they all have an artillery bot, and they fill in the rest of the spots around it and they just hope to do damage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was playing an engineer with no bots. And only in instances where I knew I was going to be taking large mobs. Uh, I just imagined the engineer like a paladin from World of Warcraft. So the more, if I was going to do mob grind, I would just bring an artillery bot with me just to barrage things that I knocked down. Uh, I didn't notice a lot of issues with damage output. I was doing pretty good. I was When we first started, we were doing some small things with, uh, I think it was with Nogoth and uh, Ravenclaw. Yeah. And... Uh, we, I was pushing like second, second place damage on everything with my, with my uh, engineer, uh, which was pretty good. But the problem was is that I hate. I played him in beta, and so I figured, yeah, I already played it. I'll do it again. And I decided that I hate the robots because <laughs> they're retarded. They no, just no, run dude, around. no, dude. Robots best AI ever. Hashtag best AI. Uh, I mean, I get it. I, I know how pet classes are. This is what they do, but. You, you spend so much time, like even the other night we played with Shriggs, we did that adventure, yeah. and his his robots stood at the beginning of the instance, just the entire there. adventure. They just stood there. They, they just, just stood like, there. Hi, Mom, I'm on stage. <laughs> and what was, what was frightening was he didn't know that he didn't have them the whole adventure, and that's, 
for him that's a significant part of his damage and his threat you know he doesn't yeah. have them mm -hmm. so my girlfriend played a warrior during beta and uh i thought it was terrible looking it just didn't look fast um and so i was like i hit 24 i was going to white veil vale, and white veil is kind of where i slow down i get really bored in white veil vale. and uh so i was like oh, i'll just re-roll and i have caught up to my engineer in half the time and I have an easier time with the engine, with the warrior. He seems to be, he definitely puts up more damage. That's that's gonna be my alt. Um, this is the first game I, I've ever played where it's like the warrior gets the love. Like he, mm -hmm. he, you can you can have a warrior play the game and do real damage. There's this like there's no question about it. They they do damage. Whereas uh, I've played a lot of like other games where warriors were like, this is a tank class. You're allowed to tank. Yeah. This is I mean, your build, yeah. well, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, and, you know, you either get a shield and you get a sword, and you know, you can carry other things. I don't know. I, I really like, I really like the way that they went with that class. It's, yeah. it's, um, uh, but the low levels are really difficult to, um, like, it's fine for PVE, but if you're doing PVP, it's really difficult to feel like you're effective. Um, oh, oh until, I, like, I completely until you reach like twenty five. No, I, I completely like, disagree, bam. dude. Uh, for for the warrior man, did you see the uh, stream that they were doing where that guy was playing a P warrior in PvP? Oh, Bajira. What yeah, level? he was level 14. twelve. He was like level fourteen. He okay, was... yeah, yeah. After the top tier, because you remember fourteen is the highest level of right. that bracket. Right. So yeah. so everything he's facing is level fourteen under. Now just get into level seventeen and see what but happens. But he was like, level fourteen. He has leap. He has uh, he has whirlwind, which is a terrible ability, but people like it. And he has that ability that uh, pulls people, it, like drops something and pulls all the mobs in the area to you. So what he can do is, in let's say Walatiki Temple, you got someone running a mask. Uh, you could be on the other side. You run at them, you leap, and then you pull him towards you, kick him to the ground. And then smack down, and then it just rocks their health almost to zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, like it, it, every time someone says Whirlwind, I always think of Bone Storm from ICC when the the first boss Bone Storm. No, okay, never mind, <laughs> <laughs> never mind. So, uh, like, warriors at low levels are ridiculous, and warriors at like I think the medium levels are also really good because the the damage buff that they received was just really really helped them out. I mean, it, it's uh, it's really crazy to go up against a warrior and he just melts your health. I, I feel that, that they do too much damage because they have, like, those huge AoE kind of cleave abilities, which is, like, most of them. So I feel that they, they either need to tone down the cone a little bit or at least tone down their damage at that level because they're, just, they're so hard to kill because uh, they have so much crowd control. It's crazy. Uh, Ketris, yeah, but... Yeah. Go their ahead, downside Russell. is they they unlike the other classes, uh, their resource melts over time. Like even in combat, they decay kinetic energy faster than the other classes. So you're constantly playing a game where you go in, you start building kinetic energy to unlock your abilities, and then it just starts decaying on its own. So you're constantly in this game of balance where you have to go back and use builders again just to keep your abilities running. That's fair. And they seem to, they burn it faster than gen, than the, I was keeping volatility more often than I did on, with the engineer than I am with the kinetic energy on the warrior. Interesting, interesting. Uh, Ketrasel, how has been your experience level one to 24 and what classes have you played? Uh, yeah, I, my, my main right now is my spell slinger. Mm -hmm. um, I have absolutely loved it. And once I figured out that I had a couple abilities that I wasn't using properly, and I'm <laughs> using them properly, nice. oh my goodness, everything just dies in front of me. Yeah. Um, I played a uh, Esper to, I think, 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> fun. And I love watching other people play Espers, especially like we have a guy that's a healer. The um, animation. Yeah, they heal with marshmallows and balloons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I feel great. I'm a high on sugar. <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, I have my, my warrior. Balloons. That's awesome. Yeah, I have my warrior that I, that I was playing with you. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I I will completely agree the the way that kinetic energy works. I don't like how fast it decays out of combat because it's like I go from one mob and I'm completely out of it. 
And I'm like, I never get to use my, my cool looking abilities because I'm always out of kinetic energy well, at low to, level. To be fair, at low level, you kill things so quickly, you're not going to like need a lot of it. But, I just want to see my cool ability. Well, yeah, no, 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 that's fair. Okay, so um, ha have you seen the the Warriors, uh, like, I always want to say Rage Meter, but it's kinetic energy. Rusty, have you seen your Warrior just kind of constantly be in, like, a good kind of state of kinetic energy during, like, massive PvP battles because you're always able to, like, use your, your abilities on, on players? Or is it, like, a constant battle, kind of push-me-pull-you type of thing? Um... Yeah, well, if if I'm on the top of the t of the bridges, let's say, I will hit. My goal with my AMPs is I need to hit max kinetic energy because I do an AOE damage effect, and I just uh, burst out damage over time as I blow through kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. But if I'm anywhere else on the map, I tend to run low. But um, there's a nifty trick, if you keep kick on your bar, which is your basic interrupt. And then SmackDown, which I was using incorrectly for 10 levels. <laughs> SmackDown reads that it does damage, but if you kick your opponent to the ground, if they're physically laying down, and then you use SmackDown, it triples the damage. Oh my goodness. Um, so the trick is to get as many guys into your cone of death as possible, and then kick, and then slap down, uh, SmackDown, and then Ripsaw. So then they stand back up, and now they are low on health and hamstringed. And then it's it's just fun to stand on the top of the bridge and just Interesting. watch people jump away from you. Interesting. All right. Um, I did not know that. Yeah, I did not I know was, either. I was playing a warrior, and but I, that's that's pretty sweet. I, yeah. Um, uh, Tyre, yeah. What's your been what's been your experience in level one to twenty four or level one to twenty since that's your highest character? Um, my experience. I I I, I have been having a lot of fun. I, I like the um. I like the the questing like from the exiles perspective. I haven't had a lot of chance to like you know I've been reading the quests and getting through the story mm -hmm. a little bit more. Um, I gotta say that some of the story is a little dry. <laughs> I love the lore, but like there are certain sections where it's like the Dominion have done these things, now get them, and it's like <laughs> and, it, and it's like the string of the string of quests in that zone, like the thirty or so quests you're doing are all the Dominion. They've done it. They've done it again! Get it! Get it again! And I was just like, okay, guys, yeah, I get it. They control this zone. Well, I mean. Let's, 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 like, let's, like, find something in the zone that's important or, like, you know, interesting. And I, I can understand, like, from a, from a lore perspective. But there are other areas where it's just, like, the most fascinating thing ever. Like, they find some Elden artifact and, mm -hmm. like, you know, there's this, um, there's this, uh, uh, Elden, um, Elden Research Facility, where, uh... Spoilers, where... by the way. You still have to find it. That's true. You, I'm not telling you where it is. All right. Uh, where they've kind of, like, melted the brains of these research scientists, and you have to, like, go around and talk to them all, and then, like, figure out where this, where this, uh, where this chick's oh, father is, right. and then... And then, and then you, like, get in there, and you, you get, like, this other cube, and it tells you a little more of the story, and you're like, oh... So that's what happened. And then you get out, and you basically have to tell this girl that you killed her father. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's she like, just, she at least you tried. Weeping. Yeah, she's like, you tried. And then she just starts weeping. But, like, it's Dude, quiet. That's... And you're standing there, and you can hear it in the back of your, like, I got the headset on, and you can hear it. And she's just crying. You're and just you're like, like, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't even try to talk to him. I mean, it just I walked like... in and he aggroed, so I murdered him to death. <laughs> yeah, right? That's exactly what I did. I was like, sorry. these guys are bad. It's like, oh, if it, oh, you're red? All right, well, I guess I'm going to kill you now. And he's like, no, wait. I just want to give you some care, some puppies. I'm sorry. Kick, smack down, done, walk away. Wait, no. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so that, was, that was an interesting thing. Well, okay, so to be fair, kind of, kind of going, talking about lore for just a second here. To be fair, I mean, we can't, they can't always have an interesting story for for quest. I mean, oh, like, yeah, no. like a yeah, totally. like the main story is going to be there. Like like the main story is, is what you're there. Like some of the side missions are going to have some cool stuff, 
But let's be honest, this is a MMO, you're gonna have a lot of boring grinding to do, at least in my opinion, because I hate leveling with a passion anyway. I, I haven't, I have not experienced this well, game as boring. No, no, like, 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 and that's the thing, I haven't been bored questing. Most of the time I'm like, ooh, piece of candy, ooh, piece of candy, ooh, piece of candy, and... You uh, get so lost. Uh, dude, it's, it's, it's terrible. When you're in the team speaking, you're like, oh, I found, where's this thing? And then you're like, oh, look at this, I found a challenge. Oh, I clicked on this thing, and I'm like... Just focus. Just focus on the thing you were doing. Yep. It's got an arrow. You can do this. It's terrible. Catch yourself. Well, it's it's got an arrow. You can do this. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be a t-shirt. Oh, man. That needs to be a meme. <laughs> uh, uh, catch yourself. Go ahead. Yeah, the other thing, too, that like one of the most boring quest types in every other game is escort quests. Those are amazing. The yeah. escort quests in Wildstar aren't horrendous nope because a the mobs walk faster than you do and b they don't run through every red thing on the map they're like oh hey i'm gonna avoid that pack of mobs because i know you don't want to kill it i'm like hey thank you thank you very much npc yeah. there's that one escort where every time he or you aggro a mob he goes into stealth mode and he's like you got this <laughs> i'm like come on man just sure. about a minute or two give me something yeah, yeah. And the, the, there was this escort quest where in um, Gala, Galaris, Galaris, uh, Gala, where the heck did Gala from? Galaris, where you have to escort this tank out of this beehive with like honey in it. That was oh, cool. True. That that was yeah. like th that was, was cool. Short. Yeah, it was short. <laughs> I was like, uh, oh, wait, I'm done. Like that that wasn't 45 minutes. Like, do you, was... do you guys remember that one escort quest in the? Not the Barons, but in uh, Burning Steps in World of Warcraft, it took like 15 minutes. No, there's that a, there's was a, horrible. A, but yeah, the, pro, the Proto Star one in um, Aurora, yes, uh, from the Dominion side, where you're mm -hmm. like Fog Otter mentions this, like when he did his stream, uh, he he laughed, he was laughing pretty hard. But uh, we um, we went uh, we went, you go into this cave and you have to get this pig. Mm -hmm. and, and instead of escorting the pig, you just put rockets on it and kick it in the ass. And, and it's it just gone. Yep. And you're like, oh, oh, that's an escort quest. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Yeah, th those those quests, are like, just give me 14 of those and I, I'm a happy camper. Because who doesn't like watching Bacon Fly? I mean, come on now. Yeah. Bacon! Bacon! All right, so as, as far as, um, uh, like, leveling goes, I, I think that... Uh, uh, before we uh, before we close, uh, anyone else have anything to add? Anything they want to bring up? Anything at all? Catch yourself. Do you have anything? All right. If I could unmute my mic, I would say no. Okay, there we go. All right, so um, <laughs> we're gonna close the show, up, guys. I do appreciate everyone watching and listening. Uh, you know, we've had uh, some some peak in viewers over the last week, which is really really kind of a cool thing. Uh, once again, if you want to follow us on Twitter, uh, it's going to be at Challenge Failed. Our Facebook uh, is uh, forward slash. Oh, wait. Uh, yes. Tacoma has a, a question. Yes, Let's go see ahead. Tacoma has to ask. Tacoma, or Taco, as, as Mr. Tyramus calls him. What? Yeah, tacos are cool. I don't know why you guys can brag on me for that. But... Taco McGame fan. That's what we're going to call him now. Taco McGame fan. <laughs> 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 There's about a 30 second delay, so. All right. Uh, his question is: Is what do you think of the at uh, the wow, the attribute names for primary and secondary quests? Uh, I've been working on something out. Oh, Sorry. Stats. The stats. Oh, st I mean secondary stats. Okay, it was like quests. Um, that's actually a really good question. So what he's asking is. What do we think of the way that they have named their stats and? Uh, is it too complicated, I think, is what he's asking. So, catch yourself, we'll start with you. Um, I don't think the naming is what's complicated about it. I think it's that for each class, the stats do something different. Yes. That yeah. is confusing. Yeah, you can't because see, like, like, brutality is, like, always brutality. It's, like, not always crit, yeah. a crit up or whatever. Yeah, because I'm, like, on my spell slinger, somebody's like, hey, I need some support power. I'm like, oh, well, I'll make you something with some moxie on it. And they're like, what? I don't need moxie. What are you talking about? You're an idiot. <laughs> and I'm like, well, but for me, that's that's support power. And that's the confusing part mm -hmm. in, in 
in my opinion, not the naming, it's that it changes on every character. Yeah. It's... What stat you're looking yeah. at. I, mm -hmm. I'm happy they did it. Like, they, yeah, they changed it. Um, I kind of like that it's ba up, up and down, but I had to get used to liking that. And the reason why is because it makes me think about what I'm doing. It makes me go, oh, well, I need to make something for somebody. Or, oh, I picked up this piece of gear. Is it good for me? Or is it good for someone else? It makes me remember other classes, like, abilities more. Um, but on the other side, it's not intuitive for new players at all. Like, I mean, literally, they're reinventing the wheel. I mean, there are sets, a set of stats, and those stats are not World of Warcraft. Those stats come from Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, they do. <laughs> and and those things are like strength is strength, con is con. Like, yeah. you know, like yeah. uh, there's no reason to change those things. They did it for their own flavor, and I can see why they did it. It does. It forces you to. It, it forces you as a user to think about what you're doing mm -hmm. when you're when you're working with um, an interface. Uh, well, even numbers, but it's still it is frustrating. Even yep. like we we did the event the other day, right? And so Shriggs is an engineer, I'm a warrior. We both take heavy armor. Now brutality is my assault power, yep. and brutality for him is his crit and strike through. Wait, what? So what it? Yeah, brutality for an engineer is crit and strike through. It's a completely different stat for him. Well, so what it weird. does though is when a piece of gear drops and Shriggs is like, oh sweet, this is a perfect piece of tank gear for him. I look at it and go, that's garbage. Like, it's got nothing. It's got weird stats that I won't use for either of them. Another, two. another so, thing mm -hmm. um, is Medic and Stalker. Stalker Tank and Medic DPS I wear the same gear. Yeah. But it lets you guys trade gear off so that not, not all the tanks are hunting for that one well, drop of heavy armor well, with so those be, stats on to it. To be fair, Stalker Tanking is Tech Grit Insight, and Medic DPS is Tech Moxie Brutality. So, uh, yeah. th so the primary stats might be the it might be the same. I, I yeah, think, we use tech too. I, I okay. So, um, w what Taka was asking about was, um, you know, what the the attribute names for primary and secondary uh, stats. I, I think secondary stats are what gives the class a little bit more diversity. And if if we look at the way that the secondary stats uh, kind of teeter out, a lot of it doesn't make any sense. Like, um, like the medic. So th their secondary stat is Moxie Br Brutality for DPS and healing. So, so that class is pretty much the same. Um, the Esper is Fitness and Brutality for both sides. The Warrior is completely different. Stalker is completely different. Engineer is completely different, and Spell Slinger is the same. So it looks like the ones that heal and DPS have the same secondary t uh, stat, and then the ones that tank have completely different secondary stats. Which, right. which I, I'm not sure if if normalizing it across the board would make it a little bit easier to understand, at least for the newer players. I mean, I still get confused. I didn't even know that engineer was that different. Like, I thought brutality was always assault power. No, 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 no. no. Brutality for me is um, here. Let me just follow my character menu because I totally forget. Well, think, think about it this way: if Shriggs and I are both playing DPS and a piece of gear drops with brutality as the main or primary stat, he and I are both going to fight over it. Right. If a piece of gear me. drops with brutality, he's going to give it to me. And if a piece of gear drops with a primary finesse stat, then I'm just going to hand it off to him. Mm -hmm. And we won't be arguing over who gets, who got the last heavy gear drop, who's going to benefit more from this heavy gear drop, because we don't have to fight over the stats. We'll always both have to fight over finesse and moxie, but we won't have to fight over the primaries. If it's a primary brutality, it's mine. It's the warriors. If it's primary finesse, it's shrinks. He gets it. It's his. You know? And I kind of like that. Yeah. Because come raid time, when there's 20, 20 people fighting for a piece of gear, it is going to be brutal if everyone is fighting for that one piece of brutality gear. No, no. I you mean, know, when you have yeah. four warriors and yeah, five engineers uh, fighting for it. Brutality for me is strike through and that... critical severity rating. Okay, so I need to actually look at my, my class stats when I'm actually getting gear because I thought all the stats were the same for all the classes. No. I did not know that. Um... Uh, Taco, go go ahead and and, and throw uh, throw that up in chat. Uh, feel free to, uh, please do. Um, uh, Jazzy uh, says that. Um, let's see here. Hang on, let me look. Uh, Jazzy said that uh, he likes it and it makes for better gear diversity, which is very very correct. Which is what you guys were saying. So, I mean, I I think that the the problem with it is it's not well explained. Um, 
And like for me, like I've been in closed beta since closed beta one, uh, winter beta one, and I didn't know that brutality was different for all all the classes. I've been like, I just learned this just now. Like that that to me is like <laughs> mind blown. So I would definitely agree that um, uh, I definitely agree, Taco, that uh, the stats need to be explained a lot more clear. And I think what can do that is if. Um, in in the character panel, maybe it kind of comes up as, "Hey, these are the primary stats of your character. This is what you're looking for, and this is what they do." So, um, uh, yeah, or they could highlight mm -hmm. highlight stats, um, yep. uh, like highlight your stats different colors. Like when you look at a piece of gear, instead of having it, um, I guess you know you could create an add-on that did that. Yeah. Uh, instead of having it green and red or whatever, like have it, uh, you know, for me, uh, finesse is is uh, pink, and then you know, uh, my secondary stats or something else completely. Right, but yeah. you have two two builds. Like, how are yeah. they going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, true. I think it's part of that learning curve. Like, you can't get into an, you can't get into a raid until you learn how to raid. You can't learn to play your class. You got to get in there and be an adult. They're not going to hand it to you on a plate. You got to figure it out. Like, talk to the classes, Go look to at the gear, and just figure it out. It's not hard. Just look at the stuff. Yep. Look at it. Oh, brutality. It gives me these three stats when I hover over it. Yeah. Are these the stats I'm using for my abilities? No. Next piece. You know, like... Um, I, I understand okay people walking right. things. You gotta, be yeah. an adult. you gotta be an adult. Like, you, you can't have everything handed to you. No one right. told you in Mario to jump on boxes. You knew it. Yeah. This is that. Um, we don't need a tutorial. Catch you yourself, want, anything else to add? Credits today. Catch yourself, anything else to add to the conversation? No, I don't think so. That's pretty much it. Alrighty. Um, be sure to follow us on Twitter, at ChallengeFailed. As well as our website, www.challengeaccepted, no ease, and accepted.com. Uh, Facebook is the same address, a challenge accepted, no ease, and accepted. And um, we're always looking for talented writers or content creators. Um, if you want to do videos, uh, we just emblem the video from your YouTube channel so you still get all the traffic. Um, if you're interested in anything esports or tournament related or anything uh, PvP related, uh, make sure to click on the Contact Us tab on the website. I'm going to be putting together a team for uh, admins and whatnot to, to start hosting dual tournaments and everything. And... Um, yeah, that, that, that's it for the show. I do appreciate everyone listening and uh, watching if you are watching the live show. Really, really big shout-out to everyone there. Um, uh, once again, thank you to uh, Carbine Studios for making an amazing gaming and allowing us to actually do this cool whole community thing. And uh, that's, it, that's it. That's all, everyone. God bless. Have a wonderful and safe rest of your week. See you guys in Nexus. Take care, everybody.